Okay, welcome back. And today we are going to continue on our discussion of counting principles. And um, and uh, today we're going to talk about combinations. And so like last time, uh, combinations are very similar to permutations, except we're going to allow, um, uh, we're going to uh, operate on the assumption that that order does not matter. So if order does not matter, it's a combination. So if we're looking at the number of combinations of objects, that means that, hey, we're going to choose these objects and we don't care about the order in which we chose them. All we care about is what we have after we've chosen them. So order doesn't matter anymore. So now my technique is not going to work as well as with the other one, okay? Because order doesn't matter anymore. So, but I'm going to tell you what I do, but the calculator, again, there's a function on your calculator I'm going to introduce that will give this to you easily, or you could use the formula. Okay, so here we go. Okay, hold on. So, here is the formula for combinations. Notice that it's exactly the same almost as a permutation. So the permutation piece is right here. So combinations, remember, combinations say, hey, order doesn't matter. So we want the number of combinations then, hey, it's the permutations, and what we're doing is we're taking out all of the distinct group sizes from size 1 to size R. And we're getting rid of the distinctions, okay? Which means, for example, if I take... A, B, C, right? I can have different permutations of A, B, C. I can have A, C, B, C, B, A, C, A, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, right? And so those are the six permutations. But what happens is to get the combinations, I'm going to take those six and I'm going to divide by one to get rid of all the distinction um, orders of one, which again doesn't doesn't change anything. Then I'm going to divide by two because I want to get all rid of the differences as far as B C and C B and A B and B A and so on. And then I'm going to finally I'm, I want to get all rid of all the different orderings or distinctions between A B C C B A and so on and so forth. And so if I do that, I end up saying, okay, well. Um, I treat ABC as one piece, as one combination. I don't care about the order. I don't care if I got A first, then B, and then C, or if I drew C first. I'm just going to count it as one, as one combination, okay? Now, the way I do these is... The easiest way, again, if you want to do it this way, that's fine. So what I do is, since permutations is part of this, I do my dashes, and I'll find the number of permutations first, and then I'll just divide by R factorial. And I'm done. Otherwise, just use the calculator. Okay? And this is how you use it on a calculator. Same idea. You're going to go to your math. You're going to uh, press math, your math button. And then you're going to go to your probability menu, PRB or PROB. And then what you're going to do is you're going to choose, it's either three or four on your calculator. Okay. And it's also where your factorial key is located, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that before. 
um, your factorial key, if you want to do uh, 5 factorial, your factorial key is also in the same place. I believe it's number 2. Okay? Um, so it's one of those three. So, but it, that's what, this is where that's located. So if you wanted to find the number of um, combinations, you would do 8 choose 3. So this is the number of objects to choose from. This is the number of objects you're choosing. And then the C stands for combinations. Okay, so we say 8 choose C. Notice that this is 56. And when we did this before, I think, uh, where is it? Right here. We got 336. So here we got 336 as our answer. Oops. Here we got 56. So much smaller. Okay, so make sure you read the problems carefully and determine whether order matters or not. It will affect your answer. So now here, here's an example. We want to form a committee, right? We want a four-person committee, but we have a group of ten people to choose from. Now in this case here, do we care in, uh, with the order in which people are, are chosen? No, we just care about whether we have four people, four distinct people in there. We don't care whether somebody was choose, chosen first to be in the committee or choose, chosen last to be on the committee. All we care about is who ended up being on the committee, right? So this is a combination. Okay, so now... How do we do this? Well, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Let's use my technique, right? So how many people are we choosing from? Ten. How many people are we choosing to be on the committee? Four. Well, let's find the permutations first. So how many people do we have for this one? Well, it would be ten. And then we have nine to choose from for this one. And then eight to choose from for this one and then 7. And so what do we get for the number of permutations? Well, what we're going to do is use the fundamental counting principle and uh, and uh, multiply those. And we get 5,040. So now, this is not the answer we're looking for. This is the number of permutations. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number and I'm going to divide by r factorial, which is 4 factorial. So I'm going to divide by, well, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24. So all I'm going to do is divide this by 24. and I get 210 and that's the answer okay again don't have to do it this way you could use the formula the formula will give you the correct answer or just plug it in your calculator this would be your n value this is going to be your r value and then just stick it in the calculator And there you go. There's the formula. So again, of course, these cancel with these, right? And then you can cancel things like 4 divides 8, 3 divides 9, and so on. So there's ways of simplifying. But again, you could just stick this in your calculator and plug out the answer. No big deal. Okay, so now, notice um, how the combinations grow in this case. So we're looking at um, three lawyers. Okay, so three lawyers are to be selected from a group of 30 lawyers. Okay, 
to work on a special project. How many different ways can the lawyers be selected? So in other words, how many different ways can we choose three of the lawyers? Okay, we don't care about the order, right? That's the key. We don't care about the order in which the three are chosen. Well, which one of these would fit? Well, in this case, it's going to be this one, right? Because we have 30 lawyers. We want to choose three of them. And so how many different combinations of three lawyers can we, can we choose? Well, we just plug it into the calculator. And the answer is going to be 4,060 different ways of choosing three attorneys to be on a special project. Okay? And that's the answer. Now, what about this? In how many ways can the group of three be selected if a certain lawyer must work on the project? Okay, well, if we have three positions, right? So think about this. Oh, hold on. Okay, so. Okay, so we have three positions available, right? Now, there's a certain lawyer that needs to be put on the, um, the committee. That's it. There's no, you know, so there's one spot that we already have filled with one attorney, right? Okay. So that means we have two spots available for how many attorneys? Well, in this case, since we already, one of those attorneys out of the 30 are already being used here, then in this case here, now it becomes a combination problem where now we're choosing two out of 29. Okay. So we're choosing two out of 29 now which means we're going to say, hey, well, the combination here is going to be what? It's going to be 29 factorial, right, divided by 29 minus 2 factorial, right? Because I'm choosing 2, so it's 29 minus 2 factorial, which is 27 factorial. But then I'm also dividing by the number of people I'm choosing, which is 2 factorial, which is just 2. Okay. And so if I calculate this out, then I'm going to get 406. Okay, and that's the answer to that problem. So, hey, if I have a selection, now here's the thing. I could also, now here, I could also have done this, right? I could have used the fundamental cunning principle and say, hey, okay, I have this combination here, right? But I also could have used a combination here, which would have been, um, well, out of 30, um, oops, or 29, I should say, out of the 29, I'm choosing how many? Zero. Why am I choosing zero? Because I've already got a fill. Well, what's 29 choose zero? Well, that's one. Because there's only one way to choose none, right? Just like there's only one way to choose everyone, right? Okay, so just, so one times any number still gives you the number. So we still would have gotten 406, okay? Now, what about the next question? The question here says, in how many ways can a non-empty group of at most three lawyers be selected from these 30 lawyers? So now this is, now we're saying how many non-empty groups, which means it has to be at least one. So we have to choose at least one lawyer 
but no more than three. So we can have a group of either one, two, or three. Well, that means we have to figure out the combinations of each one of those situations and then add them together. So in this case, here it is, right? So in this case here, we've got out of 30, choose one attorney. So we have 30 different combinations that we can do that because, well, there's only 30 different ways of choosing one individual person, right? So this should make sense. How many different ways can I choose two out of the 30? Well, that's going to be 435. And of course, the three out of 30 that we got earlier. And then we're going to add these together to get our final answer, which in this case is uh, what? 45, uh, 4525. Okay, is going to be our, our final answer. Okay. Okay, now what about this one? It says, from a class of 15 students, a group of three or four students will be selected to work on a special project. In how many ways can a group of three or four students be selected? Okay, so it's three or four. Well, let's take these individually, right? Because they're mutually exclusive events, right? You can't have a group of three and a group of four at the same time, right? You're only select you're only doing one group okay so we're going to tackle these differently so how many ways can we choose three out of the 15 well that's going to be what that's going to be 15 choose three right and what about the four students well that's going to be 15, choose four. And then when you're done, you add because it's or, right? So you take this number and add it to this number and that's the answer to the question. And so when you do 15 choose 3, you get 455. 15 choose 4 is 1365. So you add those together and you get what? 1820. And you're done. Okay. Now, Notice in this example here, just so, so I can set it up for you, is we're looking at sales. So it says a salesman has 10 accounts in a certain city. Okay, 10 accounts in a certain city. Question A, A, part A says, in how many ways can he select three accounts to call on? So he's got 10 accounts. How many different ways can he choose three of those? Well, what's that answer going to be? Well, that's going to be what? He has 10 accounts. Do we care the order of the way he calls the accounts or the order in which he chooses them? Absolutely not. So this is a combination. So 10 choose how many? Three. And so what is 10 choose three going to be? That's going to be 120. There are, so there's 120 different combinations of selecting three of his um, accounts to call on. Okay. Now, B says what? B says in how many ways can he select at least eight? Of the 10 accounts to use in preparing a report. Okay, so now here's here's the thing. What does at least eight mean? It means eight or nine or ten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take ten, choose eight, or which means plus. 
10. Choose 9. Or 10. Choose 10. Okay. Well, we know this one is 1, right? Okay. And this one is going to be 9. Okay. And uh, 10 choose 8. Oh, I'm sorry, not 9, 10. Because all I have to do is cycle through and eliminate one, right? So in each, in each combination, I'm eliminating one of the 10 people. So I can cycle through, and so there's 10 ways. So um, you'll notice a pattern with some of these. So 1 and 10, and then 10 choose 8 is 45. So I'm going to add those up, and I get 56. So the answer is going to be 56 ways to choose at least 8 accounts out of the 10. Okay, so notice that what are the differences here? Ah, different orderings, right? So we've got different orderings here or arrangements of our objects are different permutations, right? Clue words, arrangement, schedule, order, you know, order matters, okay? Combinations, order does not matter. Those are the big things, okay? So keep that in mind. So now, A, so here's what we're looking at. We've got combinations, and we have, um, let's see here. We want to decide for each of these, what should we use? Should we use permutations or combinations to, to answer this question? So A. A says, how many four-digit code numbers are possible if no digits are repeated? Is that going to be a combination or a permutation to solve that problem? It's going to be a permutation, okay? Because order matters. The order in which you push the four-digit code matters, okay? B, a sample of three light bulbs is randomly selected from a batch of 15. How many different samples are possible? So now in this case here, does order matter? Does it matter in which order a bulb is chosen? No. It does not matter. Why? Because all they're interested in is, hey, how many different groups of three can I get? Okay, I don't care about the order in which I selected the bulbs. I just care about, hey, how many ways can I get just three bulbs in my hand or in my sample? Okay, so this would be a combination. Okay. Since changing the order of the four digits results in a different code, permutations should be used, and so we get 540. In this case here, doesn't matter. It's not important. So we're going to use combinations, and uh, we get 455 in this case. What about this one? In a baseball conference with eight teams, how many games must be played so that each team plays every other team exactly once. So what do you think? In a baseball conference with eight teams, okay, so think about this, eight teams, how many games must be played so that each team plays every other team exactly once? So in other words, so let me ask you, does order matter in this case? Does order matter? Okay, does it matter that team one is picked first to play team two? 
or team two picked first to play team one. Does that matter in this case? No. Because remember, we're only interested in playing the team exactly once. So all we're doing is we're just matching up teams to play each other. Order doesn't matter. How we match them up in order doesn't matter. So it's unordered. Okay. Now, D, in how many ways can four patients be assigned to six different hospital rooms so that each patient has a private room? How many ways can four patients be assigned? So four patients assigned to six different rooms. So basically we're going to have empty rooms, right? So does the order of the patients matter? Does, the, does it matter what order? So you have room one, two, three, four, five, and six. Does it does order matter as far as room assignments? So think about this one. What do you think? How many ways can four patients be assigned to six different hospital rooms so that each patient has a private room? order matters in this case because if you look at the room assignments okay they are ordered it's an ordered selection of four rooms from six rooms right if you exchange the rooms in any um, of any two patients within a selection of four rooms, it becomes a different assignment, right? So if you have different rooms, like room one, two, three, four, five, and six, well, if you switch room assignments, then the patients still have their own room, but it's a different room, right? So order matters in this case, okay? So that's a tricky one, but just remember, just think about these carefully. Okay. In this case, we have six different hospital rooms. Okay, so think about it. if I switch two patients and I switch the rooms, is it a new assignment? The answer is yes. It's a new assignment. Okay. Okay, so here's the way to look at permutations and combinations. Permutations here, notice the permutations on the right here, or excuse me, on the left. Notice that this is our normal tree diagram that we normally have. So it's all some, uh, same number of branches, right? So this helps us with uh, permutations. This will give us permutations every single time. Okay. Now combinations, you have to be careful because in each choice right it changes right so here you have how many choices here you have your first choice so you have your first choice for this case here right and so let's give the uh, setup so in this case it's soup and we're basically looking at different types of soup and we you can have um, Suppose two cans of soup are to be selected from four cans on the shelf. You have noodle soup, bean soup, mushroom soup, and tomato soup. And so in this case here, there are 12 ways to select two cans from the four cans if order matters. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if order is unimportant, doesn't matter, then there are six ways to choose two cans for the, for the soup. Okay. So notice that. If we choose um, for our first choice, if we choose this one, N, right? So here's, if we choose the noodle soup, our second choice is going to be either one of these three, right? Now, now we can no longer use these, these um, 
assignments together. So now what happens is if I choose B, right, so here's my three outcomes here for combinations, three, three combinations so far. Now I start with B, well, I can't do B with M, excuse me, I can't do um, B with N, right, because I'm already got it. So I can't repeat the BN here. So now, so basically I'm down one branch here. So I can do B with M and B with T though. Okay. Now, what if I go to the next one? What if I choose M? Well, that means I can't choose M with B because I already got those matched up. And I can't choose M with T, or excuse me, uh, M with N because I already got that in. So that only leaves me with MT. Okay. And then if I do T, well, I've already got it matched with everything else. So that's, that, that, that doesn't, that just is a straggler. So I can't count that one. It's already counted. Okay. So now I, I just, all the branches, right? So I count all these branches and I end up with six combinations. So you could use the tree diagram, but got to make sure you use the tree diagram carefully in this case. Permutations, the same old, same old with the tree diagram. Okay. You just got to use it correctly. Okay. Okay, that's the end of 8.3 or 8.2. So next time we're going to tackle probability applications with everything that we've learned in section one and section two. So now section three, which will be next time, is now putting all this together to help calculate probabilities of all kinds of different um, situations and events. Okay, until next time, make sure you're doing the videos. There's lots of other examples in the textbook for these sections, so please make sure you're practicing. Please bring your questions to class or email me, and I will be more than happy to help. And if you email me something you're working on, email me your work with an attachment with your work, and I will be able to help you. Until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.